Hello, everybody. John Cassell uh, with Sixth Sense. I'll be going through the console today, showing us manual patching, which I consider an on-demand patch route. We'll then look at uh, more automated routes in which we can instead provide pre and post task events for the patching process to so not necessarily say push them, but instead include anything before and after an event takes place, as well as plenty of notification methods included. As you see, I'm simply sharing out my web browser. It is a fully cloud-based solution, nothing required to host on-premise. Machines simply get an agent installed, which allows them to check in from anywhere. Of course, it would include Windows, Mac OS, and various distributions of Linux. No proprietary ports required. All machines check in over a highly secure HTTPS connection. No special firewall rules need to be supplied. For the patching process, it's quite simple. Three questions to keep in mind whether we want to patch Windows, Mac, or Linux, including all of them within the same process. Where we want to target is based upon the asset list. What we want to perform is a selection of the patch content, whether we want to choose one patch or many, or even make dynamic and static rules as well. The third question is common for every process, and that's going to be when the process takes place. Is it an on-demand route? We can also automate in the form of a schedule, daily, weekly, monthly, as well as setting certain time limits, which we consider protected hours, and even another concept to limit duration called a maintenance window. The task list will allow us to develop these. There are many other tasks also provided, not just for patching, including software distribution, feature upgrades for any Windows workstation, discovery, and other reboot options too. Today, we'll be looking at the patch deploy task, where as you see from the template, it's quite easy. The first question as already mentioned is going to be where we're going to target. This can be highly granular in which we can go to the specific inventory section and pick and choose machines, containers, even organizational units or it can make a simple selection from this screen. Whether we want to target specific organizational units from Active Directory, use our preset device groups, allowing for better change control, or an easy option just saying simply pull all devices. Dynamic rules can also be supplied as well. There are a number of predefined queries already existing with Sixth Sense from day one, which allow targeting based on detection status, devices requiring attention, all mainly based on industry scoring namely CVSS risk. We can also develop our own rules, which are instead more custom, based instead on a condition editor, where we can instead say, look at all devices that don't have Chrome installed, or in general, any machine that's unhealthy that might be sitting in a certain organizational unit pertinent to our environment. For this example, we will be deploying out to all devices. The second question allows us to now target those machines with a specific content listing. This can also be as general as saying anything, although we can also make content selections too, even down to one individual patch. We have the same static as well as dynamic options from the content listing. To briefly show that listing, this allows us against static groups. We're more of a legacy approach. We can still pick and choose updates beforehand, preset to then use them for the next phase or instead use something like a classification where we can instead create a rule, such as one of the most common exceptions, include all updates except for Java, not having to necessarily pick and choose Java and remove it from the equation, but do it automatically. This allows for a much easier automated approach without the need to pick and choose for every single time you have a deployment. Briefly with content between the operating systems, Windows updates are supplied by Sixth Sense automatically. As you can see from the listing, it's not just about the operating systems from Microsoft. There are various third-party applications already included. These get pre-vetted on release day. Supersedence is always included, so you'll always be deploying the latest and never have to worry about updates out of sequence. And detection criteria is already included. Rest assured, everything is still genuine. If anything is tampered in transit from the vendors, they will be dropped, will be notified, keeping the machine secure. Of course, all metadata for content still supplied across all three operating system families, showing both the CVSS and industry risk, as well as the vendor risk, knowing that, of course, they don't always correlate. For Linux and Mac, we instead defer to the package managers, whether it be the software updates table on a Mac OS device, or for various Linux distributions, showing which updates the device is already getting from its local repository, or, of course, online repository. 
Even though these packages are coming directly from the machine when we perform detection, such as a yum update or an app get update, it does still allow us to pick and choose content from this screen, and the metadata will still be supplied. When packages are detected, the back end will look up to the required source, whether it be from the vendor's site or from NIST, to still supply you the severity based info. For this example, we're going to go ahead and deploy all updates except for Java. Now we can choose different schedules as well. If we don't make any selection on this screen, it's going to kick off right now. The beauty of a manual process, we can say run on demand, don't include any type of schedule in the future. We don't want it to repeat. We just want to do it right this second. If we do instead want to choose a schedule, we can choose from the calendar, such as a start time. You'll see from the illustration below, it can start now, but it don't, doesn't necessarily end. That would be based upon the device's status. By default, if any machines happen to miss their process, they can always check in and pick it up later. If we do want to supply protected hours, such as for workstations or laptops that might be roaming, and as well for productivity, maybe we don't want these processes to occur in the middle of the workday, we can still protect those timeframes. Another scheduled approach can be more restrictive. A maintenance window by definition is going to start and it's going to stop question that we have is, which window do we want to go with? The beauty of maintenance windows is they can be instead pre-configured beforehand, and they're totally unlimited. For as many deviations as we require, whether it be across server environments or workstations directly, or of course, separate time zones. This includes a new concept called a duration, but you can still use protected hours with it. That is, when is it going to start, and when will it be forcibly stopped? Recurrence can also occur less frequently, such as in monthly intervals, or more popular option for Windows devices, specifically focused on the reference point of the second Tuesday called Patch Tuesday. When using the Patch Tuesday option, especially for a phased approach, we can develop multiple maintenance windows, again, in an un unlimited list, allowing us to set one phase five days after Patch Tuesday, or even on Patch Tuesday if we want to run it in zero day, 10 days after for the second phase, 21 days after to ensure there's a specific amount of padding to allow our testing in between. And again, this can be for as many phases as desired. Reboots are always relevant when it comes to a patch deployment. Just know it's never forcibly rebooting unless you opt in for it. The default option is always to suppress. And this is also stamped in terms of every single piece of content when we deploy it. We re reboots can be ran at separate times with a completely separate schedule and a completely separate maintenance window limiting the amount of times that devices might get their reboot. Or if you want it to run right after, the most popular option is if required. If the machine says it needs it, then force the reboot. If it doesn't, skip it. User interface options can still be supplied if an end user is there, and we want to validate with them first. Very important option to still give them some time to prepare, provide them custom messaging and logos so they trust where it's coming from, while still keeping control of the reboot. Base patch process actually allows either direction of a deployment to, to exist. Do we want to install updates, which is the default route, or do we want to uninstall to make sure that any problematic updates can instead be removed? Some updates don't involve an uninstall, can't be removed, such as a servicing stack, but in theory, every single patch can be attempted to remove if it's problematic. At the end of every single process, you'll be given the summary, seeing exactly what's going to occur and kick off at the time intended and an email can always be supplied at the end of the scheduled event. No limits to how many email recipients should receive the notification. This will supply both PDF and CSV attachments, letting us know exactly where the task ended. Were some machines successful? Are we waiting on some machines that were disconnected to check in later? Or was everything complete? When we put a task into progress, the beauty of the task architecture is you can create as many as you need. Every single task tracks a separate deviation. That is, every task is a new template. Are we choosing new computers to target? Are we, of course, bare deviation, targeting servers different from workstations, knowing that we may not want to push the same updates and may not honor the same exact schedule? Every single task still supplies information in real time, writing us an update about every five seconds, not leaving us in the dark like a policy-based approach where we set it and forget it and just hope things work or rather tracking each individual process down to the device view. Whether it be one machine being targeted or many, it allows us to drill into that task architecture and individually see 
how many updates were pre-checked, how many updates were deployed, the end result, which is actually possible to have thousands of different translation statements based on errors. So again, never leaving you in the dark in terms of where things may have ended. Also, always a good indicator to see if the device still requires a reboot if we didn't opt in.